Hello, I kind of got myself a new hobby. I have recently kind of gotten stuck in watching videos of people redesigning dolls, Barbies, Monster High dolls, Ever After Heights, all, all kinds of dolls. And I kind of like artsy things and I like, yeah, doing things like that. So I decided I want to try this. And as you know, I am an historian. So if I'm going to have my own angle on things, of course, I need to do to make them historically correct. I kind of started by going to the local thrift shop. This is the Red Cross second hand and bought myself some Barbies. Yes, they I kind of like a proportions except from the feet, of course, they are far too small. So let's take a look at the next one. This body this body is quite awful. It's awful. Look at it. So it's quite clear that this girl, this is the girl we will be have, to have to be working on. And what will I be doing with her then? I will be making her up to be a woman living in Scandinavia in the Viking era. So let's make a Viking woman out of her. Uh, not a warrior woman, a regular woman living in a house somewhere in Sweden or Norway or Denmark. And she will first have to be rid of her hair. I will take her head off and I will take the paint and the body sculpt off. She, uh, it might be that her boobs are a bit too big and a bit too perky. I'll see. I wonder whether I can just file off a bit on the top so, so I can give her a boob job, actually. I'm thinking of giving her, her a boob job. So that, first of all, she kind of had one mono boob here because of the swimsuit. Uh, I will be giving her two boobs. And then also they have to be a bit smaller and, and I will be looking at some reference pictures because I have um, seen very nice pictures of women in Viking clothing where you clearly can see the, the, the shape of their boobs and they don't wear bras uh, because people didn't wear bras in the Viking era. So, well, the original painting was taken off with acetone and um, all the doll repaints videos I'm seeing that they say that you can take the original paint of with acetone that's but you cannot use acetone on the body because it's a different material and it will melt and I wanted to try that and very well yes here we have the body and yes you see it did melt it really did I thought I still need also to change her boobs so I have to make uh, give her the boob job so what I am going to use is this this is a nail drill and I use a regular arbor band to start with just to get the color off and try to get to get the edges you see like this to get those um, off her so let's just start this See, I've taken quite a lot away from the boobs and here actually see it's dark there it's um, so much I've taken so much off that is actually the plastic is so thin this now now I have the body I will now start working on her clothes because most reenactors they, they make them straight like this just straight and then they had they have like um, they widen the skirts with 
Oh, what's the name for this then in English? I don't know. They widen the skirt. Uh, the same thing, the sleeve is like <laughs> this, but there is also a square here uh, in the armpit so that you can, you can also have these um, triangles, one of those in here as well, so you, you kind of cut up to there. I don't think I will do that, I think, and then you have the hole for the neck and then you have mostly you have an opening with a like a knot to tie there or something i think because this is so small i can't do this the, there will be too many seams so it's probably i might do once the front like this right and then the back side can look exactly the same. Wouldn't that wouldn't that be something? And perhaps the sleeves I will have to make and make it with a triangle here because that's what happens when you. So I, I will make them like that. That's a sleeve. I think so because then I just have one seam there, and I have one in each side, and I have. I don't even need to have the one in the shoulders. I can make it long like this so it I, I make it in, in one because I have to I, I, I need to use as few uh, seams as possible I think I think so so this is the plan Flex yarn uh, needs to be waxed, so this is beeswax. Fortunately, I'm also a beekeeper, but beeswax you can get any, um, pretty much anywhere because it will break eventually if you don't do this. So here we go, small, small stitches because this, this is a small, small dress. So there is trouble in paradise. This fabric actually is too scarcely. It, it's not densely dense enough. Uh, the weave of it. Let's see. Look at this. It can't take the stitching. You know. So I will start over, and I will start over with. Oh, sorry. This fabric. This. If you compare. This is also a flax, linen you know, flax, so I have to demolish this a bit more. You see how different the threads are to each other. It doesn't sound like flax, but it said it on the on the label, so it's supposed to be flax. Uh, so, as the stubborn person I am, I will start over. I can't use this. I've learned that now. I guess I'll get back when I um, have gotten to about this stage with this fabric instead. Here is her, the dress I made. So I think while I'm doing all of that research that I have to do, because I have some decisions to make, I have to decide what to make for her, for her overdress. Since I don't want this one to open and close in the back, as doll clothes usually do, I want it to look the way it's supposed to look. Then it's a bit problematic with uh, with getting the seams in the right in the right place. Here we are. It's possible that she will never take this dress off again, but it sits quite well. 
she's going to have an overdress and that's what I'm going to research because I have some decisions to make so I thought you could come with me in my research Susanna, Susanna Bromia here we have her here we have her um, I think oh English homepage look, look at that this Viking Age Clothing in one word dot Susanna Brumé dot SE SE that's the Swedish um, ending for that. Also, they also call this she calls this Sark, it's just Englishification of Sark. I thought it was shift and uh, smooth Sark difficult to level one. That's the one I've been uh, sewing now. Rec reconstruction is mainly based on the interpretation made by Inga Hegg, based on the finds from Birka. These finds consist of small linen pieces corroded onto the backs of tortoise brooches on, or on scissors and other tools hanging from the brooches. So, one, this is what we did. The shape of the neckline is unknown and therefore I have used a simple round shape found on sarks from later periods on, uh, on medieval tunics. So you have the neckline there. I have the neckline here. There is, uh, there is a slit here. I didn't make one. I'd make a very small one, but that's too small for, for the doll's garment. So I made a choice to not make that. Probably, I would say, this is my guess, I'm just uh, talking, that this slit could probably be quite, because the day you needed to breastfeed, you don't want to have to lift the entire sack. You can have a very long slit there, and then you can have brooches um, stitch it, holding it together, and then you could just fold it to the side to breastfeed. So, the sleeves, I made just straight sleeves like this. Then you have like... Um, Number four there, gussets, that's what they call it. The sleeve gussets are based on the constructions of later socks and contemporary tunics and shirts. Here, do you remember here? I made this into one, to one piece. So here we have the sleeve and then I had a small triangle uh, in the fabric. So that's, um, it is there, but I couldn't sew it in as, as a separate piece. Archaeological evidence for the length of the sock is missing, so it's based on pictures and figurines. So we can't really know whether it was this long or whether it was just halfway. But uh, probably, I, that's also I guess it could be different from different sock. One you used in winter time and one you used in summertime, and perhaps the summertime one is shorter. That's possible. The side gores, these here are also based on the construction of later socks and contemporary tunics and shirts. I made this and made made them in one piece. So they are there, the gauze, but because you see it is much wider there than there. But the same thing there, I can't, it's too small. Um, I can't actually make them, it would be too much. Isn't this the overdress? Fitted smocker from Birka Haithabu. The reconstruction is mainly based on the find of a half back in Haithabu, with the support of finds around the tortoise brooches in Birka. The construction of the straps is based on a large amount of loops found in the tortoise brooches in Birka and Norway. Uh, in Birka, there are no indications that the smokker should have been open in the front or at the sides of the tortoise brooches. Difficult to say. Everything points to a smokker which is closed around the body. Okay, that is the old overdress is the smokker. A cord or a strip of silk along the upper edge can be found in a number of cases in Birka. We have no archaeological evidence for the length and width, including possible gauze. Pictures of figurines show that the smocker possibly was shorter than the sock. So, I think I have now decided I will make the, the fitted smocker and I will make...
Yes, and I will probably make it a bit shorter than the sock. So that's the decision. So which fabric do I choose? Uh, there are a lot of fabrics. The thing is, if I would make a full size uh, smocker, because that's what we are making now, this would be a really good. It's, you know, the rougher. Uh, there are a lot of these. And also the patterned ones. So, like this one is lovely. You see, uh, it's really lovely. But the squares are too big. I can't, I can't use that for such a small, for such a small. So what I have to choose from, this is the actually the fabric of my woolen sock that I have. Uh, the fabrics that I have to choose from, brown or deep red. always thought that I would make it brown but perhaps perhaps this I'm not sure so am I am I going to make an everyday dress or am I going to make a, a like a party dress a fancy dress I will make all the jewellery and things like that, so it's not a dress for her to work in and there will be silk ribbons on it, so red it is. She will get a red, I will have to get a larger piece than that one. There. This burgundy, really really dark deep burgundy colour. These are the two alternatives I have for the shoulder straps. This is a flax yarn. As I said, it seems like it's the best to have the same fabric. That one is really much like it. Let's see, and this is a woolen yarn, but it is more burgundy coloured. Yeah, this is it. itself is done except from uh, this band that is supposed to go just here done uh, just under the hem here possibly also as decorations down there we'll see and she is getting dirty because my table is so dirty so this is what she looks like. Uh, I have not done this version of braiding myself before, but I have seen other people do it, so it shouldn't be that difficult, I think. the belt mm -hmm. there we have it uh, you see I have now braided it's kind of half woven half braided we can say it's like a uh, braiding with nine strands so I can't seem to find 
my Viking pearls, the um, copies of my Viking pearls that I have. So I'll just insert pictures of them. I can do that now. And why would I insert pictures of copies when I do work at a museum and can go and take pictures of the originals? These are real archaeological finds of Viking beads found in the area where I live. And now I'll tell you what I've tried to do. I will look at this. I have a jar of very, very tiny pearls here. But size-wise, they are perfect for this. So, it's this kind of tiny, tiny pearls, you know, the regular ones. So what I'll do right now is I will uh, sort the right colours out and uh, be looking for a lot of blues, whites, um, yeah, and a few reds and, and, and a few of them. And then I will try to paint these to look like the original something like the originals mm. at least yeah in some ways so that's uh, what's next I also will try to take a regular electrical cord and uh, kind of get the copper thread out of it to make the brooches from uh, this is an experiment I can tell you but um, we'll try so this one, I think it's about a meter of wire uh, of this thickness, have given me this much copper wire. So, this, I'll see if I can make the brooches from uh, this. It's just thin, thin, thin copper threads, you can see that. I'll see what I can make with those. I, these are those uh, brooches, the turtoise brooches or the buckles that I'm talking about. Uh, this is at the museum where I work. You see what they look like. And um, you see it says Sota Rödön. That's where that one was found. And this says Skede Hakos. That's where that one was found. So, so I um, worked a bit without telling you about it. Brooches, you can see them there. They are made from copper wire and I have made the pearl strings. We have found quite a lot of Viking pearls and they are usually multicolored. So if you can see it, if you can get really close, you can see that I have actually painted the pearls as well. I've also done the it's embroidered here and, and up here, and we know that they didn't embroider. What we know, we haven't seen any, there hasn't been any embroidered uh, clothing uh, found, but it should have been a tablet woven ri ribbon up there, but it's too small. Even if I could have made a tablet woven ribbon, I couldn't have um, fastened it with, with, with it still looking good. So I took a shortcut there so that's where we are now we've got pearl strings we've got embroidery we've got a belt and we've got uh, buckles time to make shoes these will be tiny tiny turn shoes And here we are. These I will stiffen up with some nail polish inside. Then I will cut the doll's feet off and glue her legs into the, these shoes. Um, I'm also giving her socks. I'm needle felting them directly to her legs. So, 
Now it's time to paint. And since I have never done this before, uh, painted a doll's head, uh, we'll see what happens. I the head. Now it's time to paint hands and neck. A face paint and she has hair. The hair is made from flax that's the same material as her sock. You know the shift the undergarment that she has that um, it's the same material uh, but this is of course unspun. So let's see we have a parting about oh. <laughs> This is very clear. This is a pl this is plant material, and you can see that because you still have plant pieces left. Now let's see. We will have the parting there. <laughs> Here we have that plant material. It's still so. You see this. <laughs> I seem to have lost some footage of me styling her hair, but here it is finished. And I also made a knife and a case for a sewing kit made from reindeer antler. <laughs> <laughs> 